Hello everyone, welcome to episode 3 of Track Knowledgement, where I delve into the production tracks on a Type 4 song, show you the samples and other ideas that went into it. This one should be pretty quick, because I'm just, I already did 88s and beat breaks, I'm doing the remix for 88s and beat breaks, it's the Into the Mystic remix, which is a not only a Van Morrison reference, but a reference to one of Tom's lines from the song. After he was done with the the vocals and I had that main version done, I had this other piece of music and we weren't sure what we were going to do with it, so I just put those vocals over this and called it a remix, which I've been doing a lot recently. It's a great way to use pieces of music that you're excited about but you haven't written to yet and you just want to get out there uh, and, you know, deprive Tom from writing something new uh, from it. So, uh, so this is 88s and Beat Breaks, the Into the Mystic remix. Just like the regular version, it's available for sale on... Uh, actually, you know, this, this remix... Yeah, this remix shows up on the Look Back and Laugh EP that I just released. So, you can buy it on iTunes and Amazon. It's streaming on YouTube and Spotify and, you know... Yeah, I'm sure by now, if you just get two cans and connect them by string, it'll start playing out of there. So, uh, this is it. Let me turn it up a bit. I'll turn the vocals off. So the first thing is, on here, there's stuff that I just, as I'll do with these remixes, I just kept from the other version, so the shakers are, are the same uh, as before. The, um, you know, the, the, the little samples, like the Houdini fugitive thing. All that, it, it's, I just ported that right over from the original version. It's all where it's supposed to be. Um, at the end, you get those, uh, those cool samples here. Like this. Uh, Lottie Dottie. Like this. From here we go, Run DMC. Like this. KRS, because it's Type Four, you know. <laughs> like how? Like that, that, that. So that's one I added just for the that, 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 that. instrumental version, because normally on the leads, Tom said something, and he wasn't doing that on the lead, so I added that Jungle Brothers thing, like how, like that. So I'll fit in. So there's a bunch of stuff, you know, drum machine stuff that's the same and so forth, but. If you go back to what it's built on, it's all kind of built around these two reggae samples, which, believe it or not, that's two different reggae samples playing at the same time, combined. And they go, they combine through the entire song. They, they mirror each other, and they're panned slightly left and right. But this is one of them. And this is the other. Have those cool little high notes so together that's one of the great things about working with reggae it's actually it's a shortcut because if you find the right reggae songs a lot of them fit very well together because they're of a type you know of a genre um the bass bass line which again is like a filtered version of that uh, behind all that, I have this other sample, really simple, it's just a snippet of something. Originally, this was the sample that I started with, believe it or not, and but it's, it was longer and there's more to it. But when I added all the other stuff, this is the only part that, that I kept. You know, so it doesn't do much, and it has a bass. So actually those bass lines, there's a lot of bass to the song. Those bass lines kind of work together. And over that, I added beats. A little more sparse than the um, than the, the final version. This remix, the, the beat's a little sparse. But then we get to the other chunk of stuff that I added on the reggae stuff, which is this stuff 
that's just like a low filtered version of it but you get into here and you hear what this really does check that out Isn't that cool you have the low one obscure stuff <laughs> put to work now listen to this That's some cool shit. The flute. You add in the, uh, all of it there. It's just this hypnotic kind of, then it goes into the second part of the flute. Where there's two flutes that are playing in harmony. So that's cool. Bill's cuts again, I just moved them around. So the, the last thing that I added on this, I was listening to it, well there's two things actually, there's, uh, I added this. It's just a uh, voice choir that I played on the keyboards. And that goes, especially at the end, just keeps going. Just a big chant. So the last thing I added on this whole thing <laughs> is, I'll show you. I guess it's not really recognizable because I've tried to point it out to people and they don't really get it. Um, but it's a sample of pretty much the most famous piano chord in pop music history um, and I kind of looking back I think in the back of my head I was a little inspired by the way that um, Beasties or well, Dust Brothers on Paul's Boutique had sampled uh, Time the uh, the Pink Floyd song by just don't you know letting that that thing ride and then hitting the different notes of it this one I actually pitch shifted it in order to follow the chord structure of the samples. So, listen to... Right here. That's the pitch shifted and then it goes back down. So, that's the end of uh, Sgt. Pepper's. <laughs> What's really cool is if, if you go to the end and you add on the, uh, the vocals. rock for a second. These are the little little secret bits going on in the song that don't come through in the final mix. I'll bring the beat in. Yeah, that's that's day in the life there. Let me check the sh shakers off and the choir. There you go. I don't let it run quite as long as the whatever it is two minutes it runs at the end of Sergeant Pepper's. But anyway, so much for a, a quickie. Um, check out the vocal version of that on YouTube and iTunes and everywhere. And I'll be back. I'll be back with a whole different song. I'll pick something else, something older. Thanks for watching.